curiosity. So this is my son, Mateo. He's four here, and he is a very curious soul. He likes leopards, paper airplanes, and tikka masala. Now, being a parent, as I watched my son, Mateo, you know, be uh, curious in so many ways, made me reflect on where I may have become curious. And there was something my dad did when I was growing up that I didn't realize at the time may have been significant. Let me tell you about that. When I would go on playdates after school around this age, uh, while my other friends would get picked up and maybe take a bus home or a car, my dad had a strange way of getting me home. We would run home. We would run maybe three or four miles through New York City. If it was raining or sleeting or hailing, we would still run. And I didn't pick up on it right away. It wasn't until I had one fast friend that I went to many times that I realized when my dad picked me up, he would take me home a different way each time. And, you know, through that, I learned that there's an infinite number of ways of doing things. And I think that uh, played out in many different ways in my life that I'm going to come to in a moment. So when I was old enough to not need my dad to chaperone me home, I still wanted to go on adventures. And I would go to the northern part of Manhattan, it's 13 miles long, and on uh, our Independence Day, July 4th, when everyone's out, and the one day you can light firecrackers in New York City, I would run the length of Manhattan. And it was fascinating to go through all the different neighborhoods and communities and see the transition points between the sub-neighborhoods. And that was uh, an annual event that I looked forward to. Second part of my talk is about adventure. So I feel like I was curious at a young age, and uh, it's manifested itself in interesting ways in my career. That I've uh, spent a lot of time trying to help people be adventurous. So uh, a few years ago, uh, some friends and I started a network of schools. We decided we wanted inner-city youth, 9 to 14-year-olds, to uh, do hands-on learning. And at the end of 10 weeks from the best uh, of Boston, this is where we started it, the, the youth would teach back. And here's an example of hands-on learning. And so we would have students who worked with architects go in the Eagle Room, and that's where the mayor of Boston makes all his big decisions, and the students would present a, a vision of the future, and the, the mayor would hear we started to scale this and grew this to eight U.S. states and went to different corporations and said, let us come into your offices and, and pitch this idea. This is 50 Googlers. And I asked them to take out their phones to text their interests, their passion. And if you could read this, you'll see lock picking, bicycling, photography, knitting. And then I spent two hours with these 50 folks to say, if you were to teach, if we were to democratize teaching, have you teach, who would you have as guest speakers? What field trips would you go on? What would the wow be where the students are teaching back? Who would the audience be? And in doing so, we help people teach from the textbooks of their lives and use the city as a classroom. And now this is a $35 million nonprofit called Citizen Schools, and we're democratizing teaching. Another thing that I did to kind of facilitate this, this sense of curiosity was I organized a conference. Obviously, you know, Inc. does conferences so well, and there's tremendous power in the conference. Well, I organized a conference where I said to the speakers, in addition to giving the talk of your life, would you happen to be able to organize uh, a field trip where over the course of the year, people could go experience your talk? So just a few, uh, glass blowing, going to a plasma reactor, going to jail, learning liposcopic surgery. We've done 100 of these that about 8,000 people have gone on. What if all conferences around the world, the new normal, was that in addition to hearing speakers, you actually went to the speakers on their terms. How would that uh, be a game changer in education? So the third thing I want to share is world health, and this relates to my latest chapter at, uh, at MIT. So this is the uh, McLaren building at MIT. It's actually 10 buildings, and it was built 96 years ago. And probably because of the weather in Boston, the snow and the rain, uh, all the buildings are connected. And that had an interesting consequence. That meant all the different disciplines in the building were forced to bump and connect to one another. There were no barriers. At MIT, there's a ton of collaboration, and that's not always the case in academia. And I'm pointing out the infinite corridor. If you just walk from one end of that building to the other, you, go, um, you cross through seven different disciplines, and often the demarcations isn't even clear. So I am at the Camera Culture Group at the MIT Media Lab, which takes it to another level. The building is, is, is all glass inside. So if you want to hide from someone, you can't. And uh, as a result, everyone can see what everyone's doing. And I think secretly they didn't uh, 
build enough office space. So everyone was out in the lab and, and, and working with one another. And as a result, there's a ton of creativity and collaboration. So when I started working there, Ramesh and Shidish and Amy said, we're going on an adventure. And I certainly knew the word adventure. And I said, uh, where are we going? They said, Hyderabad. Ramesh had this vision that if we could create uh, open source hardware medical devices uh, to work with the eye, look at the back of the eye, the retina, you can get predictive analytics that can tell a lot about an individual's health or society's health, or uh, help the, uh, the vision impaired population in India, which constitutes for a fourth of the world's population that are visually impaired, that that could be a game changer in health. And so we collaborated with an incredible institution, LV Prasad Eye Hospital. We recruited 100 college students from 30 different colleges in India who didn't know much about medicine, that wasn't uh, an area that they were interested in or had focused on, and we matched them up with the clinicians of this eye hospital, and we matched them up with patients of the eye hospital, and through the MIT way, we facilitated collaboration and adventure. Just a moment ago, President Kalam came to LV Prasad Eye Hospital because a center was just inaugurated to perpetuate this kind of collaboration. And the last thing I want to end with is that um, because my, my dad uh, had me run different uh, uh, paths growing up, I think it made me a little more adventurous. And I think all of you are such thought leaders and so accomplished. How much are we intentionally helping those around us to be adventurous? How much are we being adventurous? And it's fitting to start off the uh, MIT block by saying, I think if the MIT Media Lab and Inc can be more adventurous together, there can be tremendous innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you.